We got back from Williamsburg uh, yesterday evening early, and I found two things there I want to share with you. The first was at the campground that we stayed at. We stayed in a little cabin there, but there were tents and there were RVs, <clears throat> and there was a tent just down from us um, where a couple, a family was staying, and I noticed that right outside their tent line was these beautiful examples of plantain. <laughs> I was looking and going, look at their plantain. And, um, you know, I could have just picked it, but I thought, you know, it's by their tent. They don't own the campground. I didn't feel like I needed to ask the owners if I could pull a few weeds, but I thought before I start pulling something right next to somebody's tent, I should ask them. So I did, and that guy looked at me like I was a lunatic. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I'm used to that. <laughs> I get that when I go to the grocery store and, and start pulling, um, onion skins out of the onion uh, bin dispensers. So right now I am, and they're beautiful, big plantain leaves. I usually, around here, we have the narrow leaf variety, which are long but quite skinny. This is the broad leaf variety of plantain, um, which is, this is what grows at my mother's house. And um, I, I guess perhaps it grows better in cool climates. I don't really see it. I, I see it down here, but not very big. It's always really small. So I'm going to rip these up. Just rip, rip, rip. I'm going to put them in a nice, clean, uh, very large quart mason jar and slowly infuse them into some olive oil and coconut oil, about um, equal parts of the two, in a double boiler over low heat for um, all of today. And don't know if I'll get, them, get any healing herb ointment made for the market tomorrow. I haven't had any for quite a while. Oh, what I'm also doing is... Um, I've already rinsed them um, just to freshen them up some because they did sit in the car for the day. But here in this rib part, you see the dirt that can be in there. You really have to, you have to look at each leaf. I know it's a pain, but um, make sure that there's no dirt. These are things you're putting in somebody's salve that they're going to put on their skin to heal the skin. You don't want any dirt in there. Um, you don't want any grass because a lot of people are allergic to grass. Uh, it irritates my skin, so you wouldn't want to put grass into a salve that's meant to soothe your skin. So you have to be very careful that nothing else but exactly the herbs that you want get into this salve. And that's why I'm very, I don't scrub them. I don't want to take the oils out of them, but I do examine them very carefully to make sure that they are clean. I just use a little damp um, paper towel especially down in these little crevices and on the back side yes yeah, you look at this see the dirt that's on there every now and then you'll get little bugs sometimes they're nasty enough i just throw them out i don't want to have to this one's almost that way all right um the other thing i found there i will share with you in a second it's a book i'm quite excited about this book so i've got a good bit of uh plantain left over after filling my jar about three quarters of the way through or maybe two thirds the way. And then I went out and picked some dandelion and yarrow. Uh, the yarrow looks very lovely. This is all fresh this spring. I've got a good bit of it. It grows pretty prolifically here. And I'm wiping down these dandelions. Now, it's important to recognize your dandelions. There's a lot of things out there that are related to them and, um, and look like them. I've got a lot of wild lettuce. And it looks real similar, but of course it's not as forky as this okay so but some of these came off of the same plant even though the leaves look a little different so just make sure you identify your dandelion before you go sticking it into your salve i even got another small this is a pint jar i like the wide mouth jars but i got another pint one i'm just stuffing that herb in there this will be a very strong mixture uh, i think very efficacious here's the first quart jar i'm letting it kind of just sit over here. They will infuse. I'll keep them gently warm in this um, double boiler for most of the day and then let them sit overnight. And then I'll strain the greens out.
thought I'd better catch you guys up with my healing herb ointment I've been making from that luscious plantain I found in Williamsburg. Um, this is the very end of the process, and yes, the reason it is green is because of the plantain, the yarrow, and the dandelion. It really makes it green when you infuse it. Uh, I did it overnight, and then the whole next day, the second day, I didn't have it on heat. Obviously, I only had it on heat for a few hours. And the rest of the time, it just sat. Here it is in the four-ounce tubs. I add um, beeswax, grapeseed oil, almond oil. Um, what's that other thing I put in there? Shea butter. And then for essential oils, I have lavender, lemongrass, tea tree, and cedar wood. It's a complicated recipe and not easy to do. So I will be, I'm sorry to say, raising my price a little bit on this because it is just so much work. And I can't have it be the same price as the bee balm, which is still underpriced, but it's so easy. All right, the, um, I love these little beeswax beads because they melt so quickly. So this one's ready to pour in and I'll put their lids on give them some labels and take them to the farmer's market. I'm doing this plying a little strangely because of the camera stand, but I wanted you to see uh, the angle of the ply, how the two colors are supposed to come together. Um, so I think that's important. If you have the angle too, uh, I guess I would call it horizontal to you, then your twist is too tight. And if it's too vertical, then this, the twist is too loose. Um, now, of course, I can pull this all the way back to my tummy, but then you wouldn't be able to see it on my camera. But it is kind of fun to just get the, um, the ply twist right there. Isn't that fun? I don't like a barber pole look that's like white and black, but I do like two colors that go together that, um, like this, where the, the tone of the color is very nice together. I hope that's, hope you're able to see that. I can really tell also that one of these singles was spun, oh, I don't know, you know, a month or two, maybe even two months ago, and one I just um, finished spinning this morning or maybe yesterday, I don't remember when, uh, because honestly, um, it's twist is, the twist of the single is, um, yeah, much looser, fluffier. This is very hard to do this. I'm actually putting my hand, my left hand through the camera stand, <laughs> but it's okay. Sometimes I do this and I'll bring it up and then I'll run it all the way up to the orifice. And you can do this and you can let the, the ply twist develop. You can sit there and watch it develop and come on up. Like that, that's kind of fun. Or you can do what I was doing before. Oh, here's a nice contrast with the red and the gray. I think that's very pretty. I generally do um, apply this while I let a big wad go in there. <laughs> well, I need to go adjust my little loops. The nice thing about plying, too, I just did this a second ago. Let me, let me angle the camera differently um, and back it up a little bit. Um, 
If I do something I don't like it, I can kind of open it up and close it back up again. If I let it go in and it's not, you know, it's too loose like there, I can close it up. Sometimes I really want to wrap uh, a tighter, like my right one is tighter than my left. I really want to wrap it around there to make sure that it contains the fluffiness of a loosely spun single. You can kind of do that as well. You really get, uh, over time and practice, I think, you get the knack of plying. All right, I got to stop and go adjust my, my loops there. It's really, let me show you. It's really wonky down here. Need to move this one down. Okay. Well, I thought I would show you the first um, hank although it's still a little damp. So this is what I got the first time. Now it is very pretty. I like it. I do like it. I can't say that I'm just, oh, it's exactly what I wanted. Um, so I'm going to put it down and, um, well, most of all, I need my glasses on. Okay, so let's look at this a little more carefully. Now you can see that the predominant color is red. It's that brick red that I loved in those beautiful bats. You can see too that there was plenty of that light colored um, batting, not bat, it's bats, which is this. Now it's not white. It's got all kinds of stuff in there and there is some white in there, but it has lots of different colors. So the way that it combined with the red and there's lots of variation in the red as well. Um, you're going to get just all kinds of stuff, but there is a general green overtone to, to this fiber. Um, and I guess I should have seen that. I'm not really wild about, uh, that kind of green. And in this, it ended up being a rather insipid green. I wouldn't have wanted a bright green either. So sometimes you do get a bit of a barber pole effect, like you see there. Um, sometimes you get things like that, like a purple or a blue. I do like, I do like the dark gray. So here's one that definitely has the dark gray and the opposing one, you know, the other single in there is that light stuff. It's not the red. Now there's plenty of, um, yeah, here's one. Here's a couple. Here's some. Oh, here's some where you have the barn uh, red and the, the brick red and the gray. That's very pretty. Let me wrap it up and put it down so you can get a good look at it close up without me moving it around on you. Okay. I do apologize for the other stuff here on the table. I've got so many projects going on. See if we can zoom in on that, yeah. It is pretty. I'm not displeased with it. Now, I still have inconsistencies in my plying, like the, I just wish that, that were tighter. Um, and it's not. Here's another big fuzzy one. When you get two fuzzy parts plying together, you get something like that. Um, what I really do like is the combination of the, of the various types of red. You have a brighter red, you have kind of an orangey red. I love the orange tones in there. I think when I go back and see Pam again, see this, I, I really didn't like this. This is an example of where two of the, I'll just call them the light colored, two light colored, basically greens, generally greens, ended up together in the plying. And even though they, they, they blend in with the rest of it, I'm just not wild about that. Occasionally you have two of the dark gray coming together as well. Um, if I had some that was just, just this, um, with a little bit of the dark and probably none of that light, I would be really happy. See, I just, I didn't, I don't want to get stuff like that. That, that's, um, the red and white stripey. Not wild about that. But this has enough variety in it, I think, to give a really beautiful, complicated um, plied yarn at the end 
don't think I need so much of the other. I would certainly keep this. I think I would have one single that was all this, and the other single would be, you know, 80% this and 20% this. This is all I have left of the dark. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It really is a dark gray, but if you look at it, there's orange in there, there's white in there, there's some kind of bluish purples in there. That was a really lovely. There's This is actually brown. Um, see, there's a little twinge of blue right there that she put in there. So uh, next time I go see Pam, I'm going to um, probably get more of the red. I'm going to call her ahead of time, get more of the red, and see if she has something like this to go with it. And I'll keep with this project. Um, this is the first hank. I've got another hank I'm plying on my spinning wheel right now that will look much like this one. So the next time I do a pair of singles and ply it, I'll get something a little bit different, but that will go with this for whatever project I end up doing with this yarn. Let's see. <laughs> 